Hello everyone. So today we will learn about DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting it is a very very important topic and it is a very useful topic also. In modern science we can use this uh, technique to solve many cases like you know the murder mysteries or the family disputes and all. Okay, so this is a very very useful technique. So let's learn about this technique. First of all, let's see who developed this technique. So he was Alex Zeffre. Okay, Alex Zeffre. Alec uh, Zeffre and he developed this technique in the year 1984. So, you know, this whole technique revolves around this one topic called VNTRs. Okay, VNTRs. What are these VNTRs? VNTRs are variable, variable uh, number, number of, variable number of tandem repeats. Okay, tandem repeats repeats and this VNTR this is a non-coding sequence this is a non-coding okay non-coding non-coding DNA sequence meaning it does not code any protein so it is a repetitive DNA okay and this VNTR specially shows a very high degree of polymorphism so it's high degree degree of polymorphism polymorphism in terms of your size also it shows polymorphism in terms of size also and in terms of number of number of repeats also okay number of repeats also so let's learn about this topic uh, so before going into this uh, this whole technique first of all we should understand or we should know that according to uh, AGP according to AGP AGP says that AGP GP AGP says that as it is your human genome project this says that 99.9% of DNA is exactly similar is exactly similar in all human beings right only 0. Point, only 0.1 percentage of DNA is different in different uh, individuals and this VNT comes under this category okay meaning that every individual every individual has its own unique VNT VNT uh, uh, sizes or the repeats okay so it is very unique it is very unique to an individual. There is this, uh, there is this uh, reason only, like it is used in this DNA fingerprinting technique. Okay, so let's see. So, uh, to understand this topic in a very good way, first of all, uh, let's uh, put up a very simple example here. Let's suppose this is one individual. Let's suppose this is Ramu. Okay, this is a Ramu, and this another person is your Shamu, okay. Shamu. So one day this Ramu and Shamu got into a very serious fight, okay. And due to which this Ramu happens to kill Shamu. Now Shamu is dead, okay, because Ramu killed Shamu. So you know, like after that, this Ramu uh, went away. Like uh, this Ramu escaped uh, this crime scene and he just fled away, okay. So after a few hours, this body of Shamu, this body of Shamu is found by the local people of that area. And then they inform the police, okay. And after the afterwards, the police came up and this they just do everything, okay. They they uh, they uh, do the investigation and all. So during investigation, let's suppose uh, during investigation, police found a blood. This is a blood, and this blood is not uh, Samu's blood, okay. So this means like this is a killer's blood, killer's blood. So afterwards, the police handed this uh, blood sample to a forensic lab. And they perform this uh, DNA fingerprinting technique of that uh, blood sample. So this, let's suppose this is our result of that uh, blood sample. Okay. So this is our blood, uh, sorry, the result of that blood sample. And uh, after everything, now the police will go again to that area and then they'll investigate in, you know, everything like they'll go to Samu's house and they'll talk with the Samu's friends also. And, you know, after all of these things, uh, let's suppose that police came up with Two suspect, okay. Two suspect, two suspect, two suspects, okay. Suspect number one, suspect number one uh, is uh, suspect number one is one uncle, okay, uncle, and the suspect number two is Ramu, okay. You know, after all the investigation they did, so they come up with this two suspect. So now uh, the police will again, you know, uh, take their sample, the DNA sample, to forensic lab, and there they will do their individuals, their individuals, uh, this thing, DNA fingerprinting technique, okay, after which they'll get their result, you know, 
each result. This is a, a DNA fingerprinting result of uh, uncle. Let's suppose this is, and this is a, this is a DNA fingerprinting result of Ramos, right? So you know, after uh, comparing this two result with the, uh, the with the killer's result, they will find that Ramu was the killer. That Ramu, Ramu was the was the killer right they can like simply say this now to perform this uh, technique first of all we need a sample right but first of all we need a sample in this case the sample was blood so you know sample could be anything sample could be hair hair follicle hair follicle it could be blood or it could be any type of cell okay but we need cell right so this uh, for example this is a cell this is a cell and Inside the cell, we, we have in that cell have this DNA and we need this DNA only, right? And it is inside what? The nucleus. So firstly, we have to, uh, you know, we need this DNA. So for that, we will do what? We will isolate this DNA. Now, this is isolated DNA. But how did we isolate this DNA? By simply treating with enzymes, right? Different enzymes. Enzymatic treatment, like we have to put proteases, right? Proteases. We have to put uh, RNases. We have to put uh, amylases, we have to put uh, your uh, lipases and etc, 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 right? So, after uh, getting this, after isolating this DNA, now again we have to, we need what? We need junk DNA, we don't need all of this DNA, right? We only need the junk DNA, so let's suppose this is junk DNA, junk DNA. Junk DNA is basically that 0.1 percent is of DNA okay which is very very unique to a person so we need this junk DNA right from this this is a bulk DNA this is a bulk DNA so from this bulk DNA what do we need we need this junk DNA okay junk this is a junk DNA and for the isolation of this junk DNA from this whole uh, genome we have to perform centrifugation of this particular DNA this extracted DNA okay and uh, we perform uh, centrifugation in what cesium chloride solution so this centrifugation is cesium chloride dependent centrifugation so we have, we have to perform that in order to isolate junk dna from the whole set of dna from the bulk dna okay so after getting this now dna what will it do so this is let's suppose this is a junk dna okay this is a junk dna this is a junk dna this is junk dna junk dna okay junk dna i mean uh, here we have what vntrs and all okay so uh, after that now we have to treat this dna with what restriction enzyme restriction enzyme, molecular seizure okay after uh, treating this uh, junk dna with uh, restriction enzymes now we have we have fragmented we have this fragmented we have this fragmented uh, dna right fragmented dna now uh, we will perform another technique called gel electrophoresis let's suppose and this is a gel okay let's suppose this is a gel agarose gel electrophoresis so we will perform this technique here so uh, we will pour out this uh, this you know the solution that uh, junk dna solution which is treated with restoration then now we will pour out this solution over here okay in the wells of this uh, gel okay generally it has four wells so we will pour out this whole solution over here and and after that we will connect the charge okay different electrodes this is uh, negative electrode and this is positive electrode positive electrode and we will connect with the, with a battery okay and after this we will turn on this battery due to which you know the uh, negative charges there are of course uh, uh, repulsive forces between uh, this dna there are dna right this dna and this negative charge and there will be attractive forces also so both type of forces will apply to this sample to this dna now right repulsive forces also and the attractive forces also now the dna the fragments of dna which are inside the swells now will move okay according to their sizes the smaller fragment will reach uh, you know in the end portion and the uh, heavier or the larger larger your fragments will be on the back side like this okay so these are the these are the different uh, sizes of dna which are traveling from negative to the positive electrode because you know the both kind of forces are applied to this uh, dna and we know that dna is a dna is a negatively charged negatively charged molecule right okay so due to which the dna could able to move along uh, this matrix along this gel matrix uh, according to their sizes so uh, so this is our result now we will turn off this battery after, after a specific time period right so after this method now we will perform southern blotting okay southern blotting 
I mean, uh, this the gel. The result that we have is in gel, right? Right now, it is in gel, and this gel is not stable. It is not stable. So we have to take our uh, result in a more stable uh, material, right? So for that, we will use nitrous cellulose paper. Okay, nitrous cellulose paper or nylon paper. Okay, so we will just uh, take out the DNA uh, resulted, uh, you know, the sample of that DNA in this paper. Now this is a paper, and we have now we have this. Uh, we have this result okay and after this method now we will perform hybridization of probe okay we need what probe so what are this probe probe are oligonucleotides okay which are prepared in the lab uh, and it is a sequence specific like you know in our case right now our sequence is vntrs right so we have to make probe against the VN vntrs and that probe is radioactively labeled okay radio radioactively actively labeled so, you know, in our case, uh, the probe is against the VNTRs. So, VNTR probe will be allowed to hybridize in the sample, okay. And after the hybridization, let's suppose this all are VNTRs and, you know, they are VNTRs. So, these are the probes, okay. It hybridizes with the VNTRs. So, now, after the hybridization, what will we do? We will we will perform a auto radiography okay and in this technique we can detect the fragments the vntrs okay it, it will emit some kind of light in this way this process or the technique is performed okay so let's just put it into our words whatever we have just learned so dna fingerprinting is developed by alex zevray okay he was a british geneticist and in the year he developed this technique in the year 1984 okay so, uh, according to, we know that according to uh, SGP, that 99.9% .9 of DNA is same in every individual. Only 0.1 of the DNA of every individual is different, okay, which is very unique to that person only. This 0, this uh, 0 0.1 of the DNA consists of satellite DNA such as variable number tandem repeats, okay, such as VNTRs, uh, which vary in number from person to person, which is very, very unique to that person only, okay. So, now this is very, very important, okay. There are different kinds of satellite DNA. So, you know, this VNDR, because we are interested here in this VNDR only, right, for this uh, DNA fingerprinting. So, this v uh, VNDR belongs to a satellite DNA referred to a mini satellite. So, it is a mini satellite. We have to understand this fact, okay. And uh, see, this is, this repeat is arranged in a tandemly, meaning like, you know, for example, this is one repeat. For an example, ATTCG, this is one repeat. So after this repeat, immediately, okay, immediately this 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 repeat will again repeat, okay. This repeat will again come and repeat in this manner, like without any breaking, okay, continuously. In a uh, uh, this is called tandem repeats, okay. CG and again ATTCG. As you can see that this uh, repeating unit is repeating immediately after one another. So that is why we can say that this is a tandemly tandem repeats okay there are dispersed repeats also but in this case we are only focusing tandem repeats okay tandem repeats so yeah and the size of this vnt uh, varies from 0 0.1 uh, to 20 kb okay kilo basis it means like you know it ranges from 100 base sphere to 20000 base spheres okay so this is very very important line you have to understand this thing vntrs after hybridization with its radio label pro Auto uh, radiogram gives many bands of different sizes. This bands give characteristic patterns of individuals DNA. Okay, it differs from individual. See, it differs from what differs from individual to individual. V tears differs from individual to individual in a population, except in the case of mono. This is very very important. Okay, so in monozygotic twins, V tears uh, the V tears are what similar. Okay, this is the exception. This is the special case. This is a special case. So you, we have to understand that the sensitivity of this technique has been increased by the use of PCR. Okay, PCR. With the help of PCR, we can what? We can uh, you know make diff uh, multiple copies of a single DNA. Right? A DNA from a single cell is enough to perform a DNA fingerprinting analysis. As because we have what? P PCR technique. Okay. So PCR is also used side by side with this technique to increase the effectivity or the sensitivity of this technique. Okay. So so let's learn about the junk DNA. Junk DNA. 
junk DNA isn't actually a junk. Okay, as it name suggests, it is not actually a junk. It plays a very major role. Okay, it it plays it plays in regulating gene expression and also gives the stability to a genome. So it is very very uh, this is very very important uh, junk DNA. Although it does not code any protein, but still it is it plays a vital role. Okay, and uh, this the junk DNA consists of repetitive DNA sequences out of which out of which V enter is one type. Okay, so we have to understand this. So so let's again recap. Okay, so this is DNA sample. We extract first. First of all, we have to extract this. We have to extract. After that, we get this uh, DNA which is now isolated. This is junk DNA, right? This is junk DNA. Junk DNA. It consists of what V enters. Now we have to cut with the help of what restriction in the molecular stages and these are the fragments now we have to uh, perform what gel electrophoresis okay electrophoresis gel agarose 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 gel electrophoresis we have to perform this after that we have to do what membrane uh, transfer to the membrane my love this is a southern blotting okay southern blotting we are doing what southern blotting so after that we have to incubate the sample with labeled probe okay uh, this is uh, this is radioactively labeled probe right and we have to do uh, this radiography auto radiography and we'll get the fragments so th in this way we have to perform dna fingerprinting okay so as you can clearly see that this is a uh, crime uh, this is a dna this is a dna dna obtained from dna obtained from crime scene right and these are your three suspects suspect number one suspect number two suspect number three so which suspect could be a possible killer of uh, that particular murder then we can simply say that it is suspect number two right it is suspect number two because see it is exactly similar right it is exactly similar so due to which we can say that suspect number two was the killer okay so I hope you have understood the DNA fingerprinting technology and as I told you all that this is a very important topic uh, regarding exam. So and as I've already told you all that this is a very important topic for, for any kind of examination. So you have to understand this technique in a very good way. Okay. So yes and if in case if you haven't understood any uh, step or anything regarding the DNA fingerprinting or in this lecture you can always comment down below. I will surely gonna reply to your question. So yes. Thank you very much. Hope to see you in the next video too.